Welcome to our recap of the day four events. So Vishy, why don't you show us the one decisive game in the open section between Nepo and Vidit that propelled Nepo to first place in the open? Sure. So uh, one of the things that has been helping Jan in this tournament, Jan Nepomnishi, is that his, uh, shall we call it shot selection, he picks an opening against Alireza Firuja, he picked a line uh, with a very deep uh, point at the end. And I mean, the surprise value is the main weapon that he has. Um, today, he did something similar. When people have already forgotten that you can actually go for the Berlin endgame, he goes there and he comes up with a new idea. Knight h2, defending the g4 pawn and playing f4, f5. I'm not convinced uh, as to his merits, but uh, Vidit also got into a fight. Um, we played g5 and uh, quite an unbalanced position. Um, then they maneuvered around for a long time and uh, with it reacted well up to a point. Managed to get his rook out with some counterplay. It's quite complicated to decide, but had he played c4, he would not have been um, in big trouble. But after rook b3, the rook was just cut off. Uh, g6 happened. White uh, collected a pawn very simply. Black recovered a pawn, but then white's passed pawn started to move forward. And later on in the game, you could see that white had the time uh, to come back and trap the black rook. And the bishop ran out of squares. Uh, king f6, bishop e8, rook d8, and if the bishop comes to h5, rook h8, and the rook, bishop has no squares left to control the e8 square. And that was it. Um, so, Jan, I think, is the perfect blend of opportunistic and well prepared. And um, he's showing his uh, class here. Uh, and he's leading his third candidates event in a row. So, uh, quite a dramatic day. Very tough for Vidit. He's really playing uh, uh, courageously and well. But um, the last two rounds have been quite tough. Hopefully, the rest day will be good for him. Yeah, he's been involved in um, very interesting games, three decisive games mm -hmm. in a row. So he's brought a lot of excitement to this tournament. Um, well, we've had a lot of excitement on the women's side today, and we thought we were going to see a lot of decisive games. In the end, uh, we only got one with newcomer Nurgul uh, Salimova defeating Humpy Konero. So that was a really fascinating opening chosen by Humpy, where she goes knight to e4 and playing in the dutch style very aggressively and when we saw her play the move h5 we knew this this game was going to be really fascinating but nergul reacted well and even though humpy had her chances in this complicated position um lots of ways to play maybe she should have played g5 a little bit faster but um here maybe she should have stopped the knight from coming into b5 uh, she played bishop d7. This was a strong move by Salimova. Things started to get more difficult for Humpy as her own king was caught in the center. So it wasn't like only she was attacking just because she had the h file. And um, Nergul continued to play well. They actually both spent a lot of time. So the key moments of their game came when they were in time trouble. Nergul started to open up the center and came up with this fascinating king walk all the way to e1 where it was surprisingly safe structurally somehow white was better because of these two center pawns black's king wasn't that safe either and when they got to this end game um, this wasn't a great situation for humpy because she was losing a pawn right away and after nurgul took that pawn it took her a really long time but she did capitalize and won this end game so um, that is her first win in the candidates tournament, and she gets to a 50% score. Vishy, what was your favorite game in the, uh, well, what was your opinion in terms of like the game between Tan and Lagna? So, um, Katrina Lagno uh, challenged Tan Jongi's night off, 
Mm -hmm. uh, they maneuvered for a long time. Here I, sub I suggested this bishop c4 move, but there are others probably. And uh, then actually decided to go for it. It was a very complicated game. Around about here, black has compensation probably. But then suddenly, um, when white got to this point and played rook d1, here black is in big trouble because the bishop is coming to e2. The rook is coming here and the queen is going to capture some pawns here. And in fact, she, at the end of some uh, queen maneuvers, um, she was forced to sack a pawn to free her queen. And um, they got here. And after rook c6, as they stay, black can resign with a clear conscience. But nobody ever resigns. And therefore, you cannot do it with a clear conscience. And we will see why. Um, here, the easiest win is just rook c8, threatening queen e8. And there just seems to be nothing you can do against that. But uh, rook b6, rook d8, still no problem at all. After d6, black bishop is buried under stone. Um, but a dramatic escape happened in a winning position. And the winning opportunities have been steadily dropping. She went queen f3, queen g6, rook a8, takes, takes, h4. And here, the last chance to win was bishop f2, queen d6 check, king h1. Queen d1, king here, king g7, and I think the simplest is just queen a7. So the queen and bishop connect to stop all uh, checks, but... Uh, Lardner walked right into the trap. After bishop e5, queen e6, because of the threat of check, it's game over. Essentially, uh, the position is now a draw. So a dramatic turnaround, but you have to compliment uh, Zhang Yi's uh, defense. She's been defending a hopeless position for the last 20 moves, but she resisted as long as she could. And uh, th that's what makes the difference. In fact, she is leading the tournament outright instead of being one of three leaders because she saved this game. And finally, we have one more very disappointing miss um, from Anna Muzichuk, who had a great chance to capitalize on her rook versus two pawn advantage around here. So she could have won the game in some other ways. But she did reach a clearly winning position. The problem was this win was actually quite hard to find. And these end games with rook versus pawns are so, so deceptive. You really have to know the typical ideas. And here, Vichy immediately spotted that the rook should be going behind the pawn. And the way that we need to win these pawns is with the king making this unusual march all the way to the H file um, to bypass the black king. And so we don't take any uh, time to take the pawn in f6. We just keep going. And basically, uh, like this, coming from the side. And actually, now black would be in a kind of zigzag because they either have to let our king approach, or you know, if they push the pawn, they lose this one. Um, or you know, if they play king here. King g5. King g5. And then we come from the other side. So um, she had that win. Instead, she gave the wrong uh, kind of, she went with the wrong direction with the rook. She went rook d5, and that allows black to simply march up the pawn. And the best she can do is uh, make black promote that pawn to a knight, because if you promote to a queen, it's checkmate. So you have to promote to a knight with check. But it's not a difficult position for lay to draw, as long as she keeps the king and knight together, which she did. So there were a, bit, a few very big missed opportunities on the ladies' side um, for wins. So we only got one decisive game today in the women and one in the open. Tomorrow, we have our first free day of the tournament. I'm sure all the players are anticipating that. And yeah, let, just the, the results for today. Three draws, one win for Yana Pomnishi against Vidit. Let's take a look at the standings. He is leading with three points out of four, chased by Gukesh and Karawana on plus one, and 
frog is on 50% and half of the field is on minus one. Um, let's also take a look at the ladies' results. One decisive game, Salimaba versus Humpy. Three draws, but easily two of them could have been decisive. So we still have Tan, Tan Zhang Yi at the top of the score table with three points out of four. Alexandra Gariachkina at plus one. Lagno, Salimova, and Vaishali at 50%. So two newcomers to the tournament are at 50%. They can be happy with their results. And um, I think we have so much more interesting chess coming up ahead with 10 more rounds of play, Vishy. Yes, if the first four rounds are any indication, we've got some amazing chess coming up. So we'll see you guys on Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time for round five.